Holly, hello, and welcome to Confessions of a Refashionista. I'm Refashionista Sherry, and today I am going to share with you 15 delightful DIY dresses. And you can create these using what you already have in your closet. Don't buy new, use and wear what you already have, but make it truly unique. Because being eco-friendly shouldn't cost the earth. This is Confessions of a Refashionista. So before we dive into the DIYs, I just want to give you a quick update on my last video, which of course was Instagram deleted my account, but do I really care? So if you missed it, I shall link it, of course, so you can go check out my awful horror show tale of woe with, uh, yeah, trolls having my Instagram account deleted. Now, of course, I did not get my account back because I was, you know, on the smaller end of uh, follower counts at only 2,600. But you know what? You guys left me so many lovely comments and sent me so much good advice that I really kind of thought about it a lot more and thought, you know what, what the heck, let's just start a new one. And that's exactly what I did. So you can now find me on Instagram at Confessions of a Refashionista. And I mean, I really hope it's not going to take another seven years to get to a 2600, you know, fellow following refashionistas. Um, but what I've decided to do with that is just kind of not put nearly as much time and effort as I had been doing <laughs> because, again, it was so easily taken away by silly people who were offended by my rainbow refashions reel, which, I mean, again, go watch the video. You'll get the whole story over there. Um, but yeah, so pop on over, you know, drop me a line at Confessions of a Refashionista and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's share our love of upcycling and refashioning together over there again. And fingers crossed <laughs> that my account will actually be able to uh, stay active this time, and the trolls won't attack me. If if nothing does kind of go well, if I don't see any growth after a few months, I'm just gonna step away from Instagram because it's really not you know, worth the time and energy that is necessary to kind of put into that if you're not actually seeing any growth happening from it. And I mean, I have so many other places where people can find me online and enjoy my fab free tutorials. So um, yeah, let's, uh, I guess, <laughs> cut the chit chat now and let's get on with the tutorials. All of my delightful dressery fashions will be linked down below so you can easily just click on the ones you want to make and go and make them. Now let's get started with the dress I'm actually wearing. And this one I've had for more than a few years. I absolutely love it and I mean here's why. So when I was still living in Germany, in Berlin, I was scrolling through my favorite vintage online shops and I spotted a dress. I just totally stopped dead that it was pretty much identical to a dress that I loved and a dress that I wore all the time when I was like 10 or 11 years old. I mean, seriously, I was so shocked. And even though originally this dress was kind of frumpy and not so awesome, I had to snap it up because, I mean, come on, it was almost the twin of my favorite dress when I was little. <laughs> so when it arrived, it was okay. It needed some little bits to be mended, but it had, you know, that kind of weird elastic around the waist. It was an awkward length. So I put on my Refashionista thinking cap and I actually shortened it from the waist area. And I'd never done that before and now I do it all the time because it's a groovy technique that allows you to keep the original dress hem, which is awesome, especially if the original dress hem has, you know, embroidery on it, has a really cool part of the pattern like this one. So uh, yeah, again, tutorial down below, go check it out and start shortening and refashioning your dresses from the waist. This one, if you can believe it, began life as a bathrobe. 
I mean, granted, it was like a very, very cool 1960s bathrobe, but I, 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 I literally have no words for how absolutely fantastic this is. I mean, it's pretty much all I had to do was shorten this. And again, just add a little bit more uh, areas here, kind of stitch them together so it didn't fly open when I was wearing it. But I mean, come on. If you have a dress that is an awkward length and or you see one while you're at the thrift store or your friend has one that they're going to give you because they don't like it, seriously, try shortening and it just completely transforms the look of frumpy dresses. This one I spotted in a thrift shop and was looking it over and thinking, oh my God, this is just absolutely gorgeous. Why would anyone donate this? But then I got to this area and there was quite a bit of damage. I don't know if it just had kind of little rips in it, if moths had gotten to it, I'm not sure. But I mended this, ta-da, with a little bit of, you know, my silly embroidery <laughs> that I know how to do. And it looks great. I, I kind of managed, I think, to make a little tiny paisley here to cover up <laughs> to cover up the damage to the dress. And again, that's all it took to, uh, you know, mend this dress and make it a perfectly wearable once again. And if you're not sure about embroidery techniques or anything, I do have my Sewing Basics ebook. And in there, you know, it just teaches you absolutely everything you need to know to uh, get started doing this kind of stuff and, and mending stuff and doing really cool little embroidery techniques. So, uh, yeah, I'll put that below as well. This one is another example of how simply shortening a frumpy, long, dowdy, vintage house dress just completely changes the way it looks, even the way it feels on you. And again, this went from something that I was like, oh my God, I will never wear that to something I literally wear all the time now. It is just, it's comfortable. It's you can dress it up, you can dress it down. It's just, I mean, it originally started out as just one of those, you know, house dresses that they uh, wore in the 70s. And now it's one of my absolute wardrobe favorites. This swinging 60s mod style dress began life as a 1970s really, really kind of, oh, just uh, <laughs> fromtastic secretary's dress. It was, you know, came with, had long sleeves, came with a belt on it. It was just, it was that, again, weird, awkward length where it's like in between your ankle and your calf, just an odd, odd length. And with this one, all I did was remove the long sleeves, make them shorter, and reattach them. So I still have that really cool cuff that was, you know, part of the original sleeve. Plus then, of course, removed the belt completely and shortened it quite a bit. So now it's really a swing in 60s mod and super duper cool. And again, a relatively uncomplicated, simple refashion that completely transformed the look and feel of this dress. I'm pretty sure this one started life as possibly a uniform because it's that crazy thick polyester that I kind of am imagining maybe a cleaning woman in a hospital perhaps might have worn in the late 60s, early 70s. I mean, it is very cool with these little kind of tabs here, belt loop tabs, but it's just that kind of really odd fabric. And again, it was a terrible, weird length and just generally not very flattering whatsoever. And so this one again was super duper simple. I simply added some cool vintage trim that I had to the neckline and chopped the bottom hem again to my ideal length and uh, yeah, added the trim to that as well. And now it is just absolutely fantastic and you would never know that it was kind of a wash and wear type of uniform unless of course you looked at the tag i mean look at that does anyone else absolutely love tags like vintage tags they're like my favorite thing ever they just they're so funky looking i mean compared to modern tags which it's just pure functional nothing decorative on there 
Vintage tags are just the coolest designs ever. And another awesome thing about vintage tags is you can really date your garments from looking at the vintage tags. And I shall link down below to my article all about how to find the approximate year of your vintage garments to, uh, you know, help you out when, uh, when you want to know when the heck was this made. So yeah, link down below for that. So this next one actually began life, I think possibly as a bridesmaid's dress in the 50s or 60s. And then I got, oh, whoop, my ring just flew off my finger. Uh, there it is. Hi, okay. Kay. Got it. Got my cool little pinky ring. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's start that again. <laughs> my earring fell out too. I am totally falling apart. I don't know what's happening to me. Okay, I'm back. Earrings are sorted. Rings are all back on fingers where they should be. And let's, you know, continue with this. So, as I was saying, I'm pretty sure back in the day, this began life as a bridesmaid's dress. I then, you know, got a hold of it and it became my Halloween costume. And I actually created a before and after a refashionista Halloween costume. This is again, back when I was living in Berlin and like Halloween isn't a big deal there at all. So we were kind of that weird dressed up family <laughs> taking our daughter through the mall trick-or-treating which I mean a lot of the shop owners were really really nice and they gave her you know a little chocolate or whatever and uh, in the organic store she actually got a case a case of organic juice so that was really nice of them anyway I keep going off on tangents I'm very sorry you're you are here to learn how to refashion your dresses so let's get back to it all right so I created my Halloween costume, but then, I mean, it is way too pretty, this dress, this nice Lurex fabric and the beautiful buttons. It was just way too pretty to, you know, sit in my stash or at the back of my closet as a before and after Halloween costume. So I refashioned it again. And yeah, that's, uh, that's the result. <laughs> and I mean... Not everybody has the same taste as me. I totally get that. And that's cool. That's what makes the world go round. We're all different, but we're all awesome. And so, you know, if you don't want to put spiders on your dress, don't put spiders on your dress. I personally like to add quirky little embellishments, you know, surprising elements, because it just really makes my refashions extra unique. And I mean, again, it really is my own personal style. So wearing what makes me feel good that's what's important and uh, that's what should be important to you too but again just another example that you truly can use anything you want when you are refashioning this next dress is actually one of the very 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 first refashions i ever attempted and again that's another reason to hold on to it right but it's also pretty darn cool so la -la, this began life as a very tacky sleeveless maxi dress and it is definitely 70s polyester but look at that pattern i mean come on and this was another one and this was i think the first time i ever tried to you know chop the bottom and then i transformed the chop bottom into the sleeves and the uh, kind of mock neckline mock turtleneck neckline here and um i keep pulling this out of my closet constantly because I want to, you know, add some interfacing or just some stiffer fabric to the neckline so it stands up because I do actually still wear this sometimes, but it's just, it's so awkward and weird how that kind of hangs down and I'm not into that. So if you have any advice, what can I put in here to, you know, make it I want it to really stand up nice, like really stiffly stand up. Uh, do let me know in a comment down below. What can I, what can I put in there? Because it's really easy to remove it, put in whatever and uh, stitch it back on, right? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am from that generation where having bra straps showing was like such a scandal and such a no-go. And again, unfortunately, you know, you kind of carry these things with you throughout your life. And I feel really self-conscious still 
if I have a bra strap showing. So that means like strappy dresses and tops are usually out for this little refashionista, but I came up with a solution. And ta-da! All you have to do is a stitch a very cool vintage, of course, necktie all the way around and on those straps and it thickens them up enough that, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, con conceals your bra straps. Now, I know I really shouldn't feel self-conscious, but I mean, I'm a Gen Xer and we were raised by, you know, baby boomers who, who really did kind of pound that kind of stuff into our heads. I mean, unfortunately, it is still going on, which uh, is something that shouldn't really be going on. And my daughter is not being raised that way whatsoever. And uh, I really do, you know, try to encourage people, you know, wear what makes you feel good and try not to think about the haters out there and the people who maybe do Ew, and give you those kind of looks. And uh, again, this is just my little solution for my own self. If you wanna, if you wanna take it and use it, please do. If you're comfortable wearing a little strappy shirts and you know having bra straps showing, go ahead. That's your prerogative. I mean, this is just something I do literally for my own mental health. <laughs> Who doesn't love a beautifully embroidered dress? Now, unfortunately, most proper, ethically made embroidered dresses, you know, cost cost quite a bit because, I mean, they're stunning and the work that goes into making them is absolutely phenomenal. So please, 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 yes, charge what you deserve for your gorgeous embroidery. I, of course, can do some basic embroidery stitches, but not well enough that I could actually create a full-on beautiful embroidered dress. So I came up with a rather quick solution to make my own beautiful embroidered dress. And ta-da, there it is. Now, as I keep saying, all the tutorials are down below, but this is simply a shirt, a vintage shirt that I had in my stash forever, as well as the bottom of a, I think this was like a dress, I'm not sure. And uh, yeah, I stitched them together to make my really absolutely beautiful embroidered dress. And uh, again, you can too. I had so many comments and emails and DMs about my Jennifer Lopez thrifty copycat dress that, uh, you know what, I just had to share how to make it. Now, the one that I made for, for that copycat, I actually made out of an old blouse and a bed sheet. The tutorial one I made out of a denim shirt and jeans, but the premise is exactly the same. And um, yeah, these are so, 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 so simple to make. And they are absolutely one of the most comfortable creations I have ever managed to piece together. So again, go make some for yourself. The bedsheet one is super duper cool and I can't think of the English word in German, luftiges, cool and breezy uh, for, you know, the hotter weather. And this one, because I used thicker denim, is definitely more of a fall winter, but it's just, it is so absolutely fantastic and super duper comfortable. Now, you know that kind of too tight maxi dress that you have lurking at the back of your closet because you're sure it's gonna fit you again because the fabric is just so beautiful. You don't want to donate it or give it away. Well, you know what? You can make it fit right now by simply turning it around, chopping up the front, adding a bit of lace and turning it into a kind of like a robe, a trench coat, overcoat kind of situation here. And uh, yeah, again, tutorial is down below. This is super simple and it really, it, come on, it, it's, it's breathing new life into a garment that you've maybe been hiding and trapped and lonely at the back of your closet for way too long. And you know what? Just because something's a bit too tight or doesn't fit anymore, who cares? Chop it up and fix it. I have an entire index on my site called Upsizing Tutorials where, I mean, everything is over there. Skirts, pants, shirts, you name it, you can upsize it. 
Or what about that gorgeous bed sheet or piece of vintage fabric that you scored at the thrift store that you've just been holding on to thinking, hmm, I want to make something but I don't know what to make. Why not, ta-da, make yourself a absolutely stunning maxi dress plus scarf or belt. I mean, however you want to wear it. This, again, so, 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 so super duper easy to make. And I mean, with this fabric, it is stunning. If you love maxi dresses, but you don't want to make one from scratch using a bed sheet or some thrifted fabric, you know what? All you need to do is, <laughs> is take a blouse that you maybe aren't feeling anymore, plus a very long skirt, or this was actually a strapless maxi dress that I had inherited that I knew I would never ever wear. So I simply chopped off the top and added this uh, kind of frumpy blouse that was at the back of my closet. It is not a frumpy anymore. And because the blouse had a zip in the back, my dress has a zip in the back. How totally easy is that? And I mean, it's just beautiful. And last, but seriously, not least whatsoever, here is something that you can do with those doilies and vintage curtains or tablecloths that you have lurking in your stash. La la. Ooh, I mean, first I added this doily here all the way around the neckline and then simply chopped out the dress fabric that was underneath. And it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. It's just so beautiful. And then because I really wasn't feeling this dress at all, which is, you know, why I did so much refashioning of it, I then found a vintage bistro curtain that I had lurking in my stash and managed to add it to the bottom of this dress to create a stunningly beautiful lacy maxi dress. I really hope that all of my super simple DIY dress refashions have encouraged you to go through your closet and, you know, get chopping, get stitching, get doing whatever you got to do to update what you already own into items that, you know, you just feel so great wearing because they are truly your style and truly uniquely you. Now, as always, for loads more tips, tricks, and rockin' Refashionista tutorials, head on over to refashionistasherry.com. And I mean, everything is over there to help you get started on your affordable, sustainable lifestyle. Because what? Being eco-friendly shouldn't cost the earth. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch ya on the zigzag. Oh, right, and by the way, Again, go on over to Instagram at the Confessions of a Refashionista. If you were following my old account that got deleted, please do follow me again and share all of your creations with me. I really, really love seeing the things that you guys make for my tutorials. It's just, it's such a warm fuzzy for me. So um, yeah, one more time. I'll catch ya on the zigzag.